Hello guys, in this video I will be covering two pitted wear culture samples from Copper Age Sweden. Uh, this is a part two, there is a part one to this where I covered two genomes but two previous genomes. Uh, but let's get into this video. In this video the two genomes I will be covering are both female. Uh, so yeah, I will show you their phenotype, their predicted traits, predicted illnesses and of course GD match. Let's get into the video. With my Nasha Kot tool, she is predicted to have Greek shaped nose, uh, black hair at 54% and brown eyes or hazel eyes both at 37%. Uh, however, this is very uh, much different from what YSEC predicts her. YSEC predicts her to have blue eyes and I will explain to you why uh, the phenotype predictions are so different. Uh, she was actually homozygous and she had two light alleles in every single of the blue eye mutations in HERC2 and OCA2. So she had BEH1, BEH2 and BEH3. Now according to my study, people with this kind of genotype, BEH1 plus BEH2 plus BEH3 had the following eye colors. Blue at 53%, then others than hazel at 15% and no brown. However, despite this, my Nashakotu predicts her to have brown or hazel eyes. How come? And the reason for that is because nobody, not a single person in my study, and in fact I'm willing to bet that not a single Northern European or European today has the kind of genotype that she had, because she had not a single derived allele in uh, this SNP, SLC24A5, uh, which is very atypical for Europeans, basically 0% of modern Europeans have this kind of a genotype. She had a very exotic genotype also in this uh, following region in SLC 45A2, also very atypical for Europeans, 0% of modern Europeans have this kind of a genotype and she had a very exotic um, very, very exotic genotype in the third SNP that I mentioned here. And in my study all these variants actually play a big role in eye color. So if you only go by HERC2 and OCA2 variations, which is what YSEC does, you would get a blue-eyed prediction for her, but if you consider other genotypes as well, you arrive to the conclusion that she had brown or hazel eyes. This is her genotype in DRD2, pretty typical for Europeans. She's um, heterozygous for the um, Pro 319 Pro SNP. She had a greater odds of cannabis induced psychosis uh, based on her genotype in this SNP in Act 1. She did not have the European lactose persistence allele and was most likely lactose intolerant. Uh, she had the sociopath gene, but it's not quite, it's not quite a full sociopath gene, it's more like uh, heterozygous for the sociopath gene, which is uh, maybe on, on the more sociopathic side for Europeans and Africans, for sure for Africans, but it's actually kind of average or even on the less sociopathic side for East Asians. She had the warrior gene with the IE, which means a uh, slower reuptake of dopamine, which means more dopamine in the system, which means advantage in memory and attention tasks. That's a very typical genotype for a European. Uh, moving on to polygenic illnesses, she had a pretty high, well, slightly above average risk for Crohn's disease, high risk for schizophrenia. Um, she had a high risk for coronary heart disease. She also had a high, actually pretty high risk of bipolar. And she had an average or maybe slightly below average risk of type 2 diabetes and an average risk of Parkinson's. This is what she scores with the Eurogenes K13 calculator and this does actually fall in line with the previous results I've seen. So it's basically going to be mostly North Atlantic and Baltic, mostly North and European drift with a little bit of West Med, uh, like 6 to 7 to 8 percent of West Med. Uh, this is what she scores with the Oracle. Southwest Finnish, Estonia and Finnish come at first three places and it's modeling her as a mixture of Estonian and North Swedish at a pretty high distance. I think the reason it's doing that is because uh, she had a little bit more North Atlantic related admixture than Estonians do. Uh, but this is not a very good model because North, Sweden's, North Swedish and Estonians have other components that she doesn't have. This is why the distance is pretty large. And this is her result with the MDLPK11. Now this calculator is starting to confuse me because I was under the impression that the EHG category on this calculator represented uh, Caucasus admixture, which is what it does with like uh, people from the Middle East. People from the Middle East score a lot of EHG component on this calculator. So I was under the impression that this is Caucasus admixture and it does kind of seem like Caucasus admixture when you run Yamnea through it. But however, uh, this sample is scoring 11% of this and this sample did not have 11% Caucasus related stuff so I, I'm wondering what uh, the EHG category here is representing actually. This calculator is modeling her as a mixture of like uh, basically uh, I guess hunter-gatherer. I see number 11, line 11, 81% Sweden uh, Mesolithic plus 19% 
uh, farmer, which is a pretty good prediction. This is her result with Pond DNA LK10, and once again she's scoring a little bit of Caucasus stuff. And with the Oracle, she's of course closest to Estonians, Finns, Lithuanians, all the usual suspects when it comes to hunter-gatherer admixture in Europe. This is where she scores with the Pond DNA LK12, and this calculator I like a lot better than the previous ones I've showed, because here she's scoring only 0.2% Caucasus HG, which I think is accurate. And with the Oracle for this calculator, she's modeled as a mixture of basically Western hunter-gatherer uh, plus some farmer. I found the G25 for this sample on Explore Your DNA. This is what he is, she is closest to. It's Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians. All the usual suspects when it comes to European hunter-gatherer admixture. And here is this sample's G25 broken down into more ancestral components. It's scoring 19% Anatolia Greece to a uh, Tur Barsin Neolithic, which I know is Anatolian farmer. But it's also scoring a little bit Iberia Southeast Mesolithic, which I'm not sure if that's a hunter-gatherer or if that's a farmer. Now let's move on to the second sample. This is also a female, also Pitbull culture, also Copper Age Sweden. Uh, let's move on to her predicted appearance. This is her predicted appearance with Noshakot, and as you can see, she's scoring 71.7% likelihood of blue eyes, which is uh, incredibly high. Like, I don't think I've seen this very often. I've seen this once with like a Finnish woman that I was running for my app, but it's just an incredibly high score for blue eyes. So she definitely had blue eyes. Uh, she's also scoring Greek-shaped nose and blonde hair, and she had uh, the BEH1+, plus, the BEH2+, plus, the BEH3, like the previous woman. However, unlike the previous woman, she did not have any like exotic non-European genotypes. She had the warrior gene with the IO, which is uh, typical for every non-European, and it's found in Europe. This genotype is found in Europe, but it's just more typical for non-Europeans. And... Um, what the implications of this genotype are is that she had a uh, quicker reuptake of dopamine, less dopamine in the system, uh, better stress resilience. She did not have derived EDAR, which is a gene implicated in mongoloid facial features, so no mongoloid facial features for her. Just like the previous woman, she was also heterozygous for the sociopath gene, which doesn't mean she was a sociopath. Uh, which means, it means genotypically she was a little bit more sociopathic than the average European, but still less sociopathic than the average like East Asian. She did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was likely lactose intolerant. She had a very, very high risk of Crohn's disease based on her genetics. She also had a high, slightly high risk of schizophrenia. Uh, she had a slightly high risk of type 2 diabetes. She also had a slightly high risk of Parkinson's. And on the good side, she had an average risk of bipolar disorder. And here is what she scores with the Eurogene's K13 calculator. As you see, mostly the same. Uh, West Mediterranean is 7% here instead of 6, but it's still within that range from 6 to 8. And what's interesting is she's scoring a little bit of uh, Amerindian, which I think can be explained by the ancient North Eurasian admixture in uh, Scandinavian hunter-gatherers, which this individual was uh, descended from. With the Oracle, she's closest to Southwest Finns, uh, North Swedes, Finns, Estonians, Swedes, uh, basically all the usual suspects when it comes to Northern European drift. And this is what she scores with the Pond DNA LK10, and I'm perplexed because she's scoring 9% CHG, uh, which she definitely does not have, so maybe um, maybe this calculator is maybe not so good for ancient genomes. Uh, with the Oracle, she's closest to Estonians, Lithuanians, Finns, all the usual suspects when it comes to hunter-gatherer admixture. And this is what she scores with the Pond DNA LK12 calculator, and it's interesting that she's scoring 2% Caucasus HG here. Uh, the previous sample scored 0.2%, so maybe this sample had a little bit more affinities towards the Caucasus than the previous one. This is the ancient oracle for Punt DNA LK12. Uh, what can I see? I can see it's a mixture of Bichon and like Iceman, which is farmer, and Bichon is hunter-gatherer, or also Bichon plus Stuttgart, which is also a farmer. So basically a mixture of just hunter-gatherers and farmers. And with the modern populations, she's closest to Estonians, Lithuanians, Finns, once again very high distance, uh, because all of these ethnicities are actually much more southern and much more like have much more affinities towards the Caucasus and the Mediterranean than this individual. I found the sample's G25 coordinates on um, Explore Your DNA, and with these coordinates she's closest to Estonians, Latvians, Lithuanians, but look at the distance, the distance is not so good, uh, because all of these ethnicities are actually much more southern, much more Mediterranean than her. 
and here is her like ancient component breakdown with the G25 and here she's scoring 18.8% of Anatolia Greece uh, which is Barson Neolithic which is an Anatolian farmer and she's also scoring what's uh, confusing me is the Southeast Europe uh, Italia, Tagliente, Late, Paleo... I don't know if that's a um, farmer or a hunter-gatherer I don't know what that is so she might be either 19 or 20% farmer uh, thanks for sticking around until the end. You can leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you can also download both of these samples in 23andMe format from the link in the description.